Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near you, your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. And we want to welcome all of His Glory Nation from east to west to north to south. Welcome to today's Take Five. Happy Tuesday. We're coming to you live from Pittsburgh, Texas. This is our new studio here in Texas. We're still working on getting it up and running, but uh, we'll be, we will be have a studio in Texas, Ohio, and possibly Florida in the near future. So stay tuned. Uh, but first, don't forget the tent revival here in Texas uh, on our ranch. Uh, that's going to be April the 1st. Uh, it's going to be a great event. I've already talked to a couple of people here in Texas that are going to get baptized at the event. First time in their life they're going to get baptized. So we're looking forward to that. April 1st, Bo will be there. Bo Pony will be there. Uh, uh, Pastor Rob McCoy will be there. Nick Searcy will be there. Uh, Chris Burgard will be there. Uh, I don't have the entire list in front of me, but it's going to be a great group. We're going to have two of our His Glory bands there. Uh, Mount Zion and the Steve Hill Band, and then we're going to have Jimmy Levy there. We're working on getting President Trump to call in. I think that looks pretty good. We're going to see what his schedule is like. Uh, so we're going to have people that are very close to President Trump at the event, and uh, they'll be speaking too. So it'll be all about Jesus. All right, that's our updates for today. We have Andrew Sorcini with us and Bull Pony. Andrew with uh, Beverly Hills Precious Metal and Bull Pony. We've been talking about this for two years, and here we are. Uh, this is the first time we've gotten together since the, the bank starting to implode on uh, last week. So I'll kick it off to you guys. Well, it's uh, we've been unbelievably busy over here, and uh, thanks for having us. And I, I wanted to be here sooner, but literally, phones ringing off the hook. The big money is uh, is um, leaving the banks. I saw that um, the withdrawal amounts for banks have quadrupled in the last week and a half, and um, I'm feeling the effects of it here. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to touch upon that. Uh, I think we've gotten a great blessing because these, these starts and false starts is giving people an opportunity to buy before the whole house of cards comes down. It's true. It's right. true. It, um, people that have been on the fence and uh, and have really been skeptical about doing this are reaching out and not not just dipping their big toe in the water they're coming in with the big money and um, the reason why this is important to people out there that might be looking to do some of the smaller transactions five ten fifteen thousand twenty thousand this is important to you because 
it's the big players out there that are going to eat up the supply and uh, send me on my beach day. So you need to reach out and make your move. Like Bo always says, don't sit on the sidelines. Nothing happens on the sidelines. You have to get in the game and do something or not. So. Right. I, I will say, you know, we've talked many, many times before and we've always, you know, Andrew would bring up the fact and Pastor Dave, you bring up the fact, let's say, you know, a, a, even a smaller, a small percentage of the population bought up all the bought precious metals. See, as much as that's a, a great thing, you're starting to see what's happening. And I've always stated it really takes just one or two billionaires and it's game over, right? And so we're seeing what's happening. You know, they're starting to, you know, big brother, they're trying to take out the smaller banks because they want to consolidate power. But by doing so, Yellen was actually just asked last week, and she actually you know, admitted that some of the smaller banks may not be bailed out. You see what I'm saying? So now what that does is freak people out, because wait a second, my savings may not be actual savings, and they're just going to be lost. And so people have two options really at this point. Number one is they can take their, their savings, you know, their money's in the bank, and they can transfer it to the big banks, but all you're doing is giving it now to Big Brother, right? Or the other option really is, there really there really is one other option, and that's simply buy precious metals, because all you're transferring, as Pastor David always say, you know, you're taking a piece of paper and you're putting it into metal, God's money, Haggai 2, verse 8. So it's a choice that people have. Again, you know, God gives people choices. The reason the whole world is messed up is because of free will, what happens? at the Garden of Eden, right? And so before God moves on this earth, we're going to see the manifestation of the glory on this earth this year. When that event happens, it will be the fulfillment of Isaiah 61, the day of vengeance. On that day, precious metals are sold out, okay? Because you can't get them. So look what just happened last week with these smaller banks and that was only a few banks and look what's happened to andrew his phone's ringing off the hook right now imagine another event like this but what's about to happen is something magnitudes 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 larger is the collapse of the u.s dollar the attack of the BRICS nations on the U.S. dollar. When that event happens, you're going to see silver leap and gold vertical like you've never seen before. Price on, on the internet is going to multiply every few minutes. It's going to keep changing. Every few minutes, the price is going to keep going. You know, silver is going to go from twenty to forty dollars. It's just going to keep multiplying in price in so in like in minutes. And next thing you know, it's all sold out. Or the dealers shut their door because the dealers don't know what to sell it for. And that's the day that I've been saying and talking about with you, you know, with, with both Andrew and Pastor Dave for so long, trying to get the world to understand precious metals, they're precious because they're limited in, in, in supply. You can only you have to go mine them. You can't create it out of thin air. And then so what's happened right now? We've talked about the financial system since Nixon. It's now 50 years. Nixon took us off the gold standard at 71. It became the petro dollar in 73. You add 50 years, you're in 2023. Then you must read Leviticus. Thou shalt consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout the land. So the United States, and the, this will be a worldwide phenomenon, the money is about to come back because the money that they've created is going to be the the thorn that breaks their back because they've used they they had millions and then billions and now trillions and so this money becomes you know it allowed them to control babylon and, and the whole world but when the tables flip it's their destroyer and so gold and silver are going to leap like you've never seen before into numbers we can't imagine before and here's the kicker the time is so limited because when, Pastor Dave, when did Egypt, well, when did Israel get paid for 400 years of slavery to Pharaoh? When did Pharaoh release them? On what day? Passover, right? When Passover, we're talking, is three weeks away. It's to the, the technical date, the calculation would be April 6th. I don't know if it's going to happen on April 6th. I'm just telling you, if you study history, you might know what's going to happen in the future. Ecclesiastes, that which has been will be again. Israel got paid for 400 years of bondage when they plundered Egypt. 
they left Egypt on Passover. Passover is April 5 through April 13th. Okay. So those that are sitting on the fence, like, you know, we, Pastor Dave and, and Andrew have said, you know, you've, you've been, you've been blessed with a small window here still. Yeah, I watch, I don't know if you both saw Robert Kiyosaki's interview on Neil Cavuto last Friday. I got I don't watch Fox rarely, but I was I was caught. I, that's the only thing I could see on TV. But it was amazing what Robert Kiyosaki said. He said, uh, "This gold and silver is God's gift." And Neil Cavuto kind of laughed at him and was like, "What are you talking about?" He says, "That's God's gift. Everything else is manufactured and printed. It's worth nothing." And he kept going back to that. Neil Cavuto wanted him to talk about stock market and banks, and he just redirected it back. No, you're not hearing me. Silver and gold are God's gifts. The real problem is the bond market's crashing. And the bond market is systemic, as you know. I mean, I'm, I'm concerned about IRAs, pension plans, and all that. So uh, this is more than it's, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm concerned, should I say. And, then, you know, thank you for all these years letting me come on your program and say, buy silver, buy gold. Because <laughs> when I first heard it coming on, I think this was three dollars, and this was fifty dollars, and now it's two thousand. It didn't get any bigger, Neil. It's still, you know, no, it did not get any bigger. But but you know what's interesting? The Fed and the FDIC are signaling hyperinflation, which makes gold and silver even better, because this thing here is trash. They're going to print more and more of this fake money, and that's what the Fed and the FDIC is signaling. We're going to print as much of this as possible to keep the crash from accelerating. But they're the, they're the guys who are causing it. <laughs> wow. If you can't get that through your head after what he just said. I, I, let, me, let me give you, Andrew, if you can maybe add on this, but I, I want to give people a visual, okay? So take a triangle, okay? So take a triangle and then flip it upside down, okay? So flip it upside down and the very apex of that up, upside down triangle, the very bottom of it is gold and silver. That's how much gold and silver there is in the world relative. So now you got a V going this way, right? And the rest is fake money, paper money. So it's so the entire financial system is balanced. This whole triangle like this, right? Everything here is fake money is balanced on gold and silver. So when something happens, the whole triangle collapses and what's left standing? Gold and silver. So we're about to see a collapse of the entire triangle. And what's and the, and and the pivot to the, the pivot of the triangle, the, the the base of it, has been what's been money for five thousand years. So when all else fails, gold and silver become money, transactional instruments, and that is what's about to happen in the year of jubilee. April is so close for this event to go down, and then that leads us into May. May is going to be the moment in time. Because what happened, Pastor Dave, Pharaoh released Israel because it's the first, because of the angel of death, killed his firstborn and all. And it was precision strikes. This is the cool part of how the angel of death attacked, right? He attacked, it was precision deaths. It wasn't random deaths in families or random deaths across Egypt. It was precise deaths of the firstborn of each family, including the beasts. That's how you know you had the, the hand of God was all over that, and Pharaoh knew it. And that's why he released Israel. But then again, he dug in his heels, and he still got, well, you know, I, I coined it as buyer's remorse, right? And he turned, and turned around, and he went for Israel with the chariots. 600 chariots and you know and himself they went because they wanted to now kill israel for them destroying what they would just happened with the angel of death and so if you're thinking war don't be surprised okay that was a war that was about to happen in the time of of egypt and israel but the war never happened and so we're about to see the complete clash of the titans where these guys are going to throw everything they got at the world because they know that what the truth comes out of what they did not only the financial you know enslavement that they've had but you know the children everything that they've done to humanity becomes exposed they know they're dead so they're going to fight to the death 
And so the point of what happened, you have to understand that was a war that a, a massive war that was about to break out at the Red Sea where Israel was about to be utterly obliterated. OK, that was a war. So if you don't think we're going to come into a war, but it's not going to manifest. That's the point, because if you read Matthew 24, be not deceived for the end is not yet. There will be wars and rumors of wars. So the end is not yet. And what is it? It's the beginning of this is the cool part. Birth pains. Mm -hmm. So a new era is about to be birthed, but the financial system, everything we know collapses in May because that moment in time at the Red Sea is May 1. Now, does it happen on May 1? God knows, not me. I just did the math. And what it's pointing to is the first week of May is going to be a, a month or a, a day or a week. The first week of May will be a, a week that literally you know, the, the, remember God only needs 24 hours. You know, you've had Julie on your show about this. When you read the Bible, you know, the story of Daniel, there, there's so many events where uh, Joseph went from the pits to the palace in 24 hours. Right. And so God needs 24 hours. And there's going to be a moment in time. I believe it's beginning of May where everything we know gets flipped upside down because the Isaiah 61, the day of vengeance is fulfilled in the financial system. We know blows up and i as 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 you know if this is something not to look forward to but it's also something to look forward to because the world has been chasing money for generations and god you know pastor dave when you lose everything you fall to your knees and you find who him him you find god so god needs to destroy the financial system and if you read daniel 2 verse 34 a stone which is gold and silver carved out by no human hand means god explodes the price of gold and silver why to destroy babylon because it's it's, it's written daniel 2 verse 34 the stone destroys babylon by the hand of god so god's about to destroy babylon fulfilling the two and a half thousand year prophecy how awesome is this we get to watch the fulfillment of Daniel 2, verse 34, in our lifetime. And so those that prepared are going to have enormous blessings. But the point of the preparation financially is so that they can bless all those around us. Because why? The, thy kingdom's coming. So we're no different than, you know, prepare the way for the Lord, John the Baptist. And so we're going to be, the finances that are coming are going to be, and there's a lot of people out there, you know, you've said, Pastor Dave, and I've said, that don't have the financial means because why? They've got jobs, they're just over broke, right? Because that's what Satan's done, they've enslaved everybody. But the blessings that are coming, because they've created trillions, this is the coolest part about our God, right? Well, so many of you know, our God's incredible, but here's one cool verse about our God. Okay, he wrote Ecclesiastes 2:26. And think of this, Ecclesiastes 2:26. 2, uh, 2, to the person who pleases God, he gives wisdom, knowledge, and happiness. But to the sinners, he gives the task of gathering and storing up wealth. Those are your trillions of dollars to hand over to the ones who please God. There is your wealth transfer proverbs 13 22 the wealth of the sinner is coming to the church so we are going to have blessings like we can't even imagine when babylon collapses and so why is andrew's phone been ringing off the hook because it's just starting it's just this is the trickle this is like andrew said this is the you know, they got a dam there's like they got fingers all throughout the dam right now <laughs> go ahead andrew Oh, that's, and me trying to get product is the same thing. It's uh, definitely plugging little cracks in the dam with fingers. I talked with uh, one of the very big wholesalers, like like possibly the biggest one. And um, he rejected a larger order that I had for gold. And he said, I just can't fill this unless you're willing to wait like a month to get the product. He said, and this is a quote, and this is why I'm telling this. He said, no one wants to sell their gold. And he's not talking about just regular people out there. He's talking about the dealers, which that's how the premiums go up in, in value. That's how the premiums go higher is that people, when the writing's on the wall and it's so crystal clear that gold is going higher and silver too, 
that people that are in that are dealers in this industry they just say oh i don't have it but i'll buy all that you have but they they just say i don't have it unless somebody wants it so bad that they're willing to overpay for it and then someone eventually does overpay for it and that's how the premiums go higher so they're not they're not uh, sky high yet but they're heading there so it's time to act yeah it is because they can't hold back this this dam any longer it's it's breaking and I've, I've said many times the last few weeks, it's been a blessing that we've had a, a start and a stop, a start and a stop. It's allowing people to to consume silver, or get silver and gold before it's too late. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One great thing that, that we've done here is that by the time I believe that the gold premiums will be sky high, will probably coincide with the exact time that the His Glory Gold Lion comes out, which yeah. is which is re a really great move for us because. Um, we control that market. It's an exclusive uh, coin that is only authorized by Pastor Dave and, and the staff there at His Glory. So so all we have to do is just find the gold to keep making it with instead of go out and hunt for specific gold that's already made into coins. So that's an advantage that the people that are um, part of the His Glory family or even um, other friends that we all have in common will have access to. Yeah, and can you give us uh, any updates on that? Because we that's probably my number one email is, when is that gold coming? <laughs> yes, um, within the next few days here, before, before March 30th or so, I should have samples in hand. When I look at the samples and if, if they look nice and if it, you approve of the final samples, then we can start selling them and then it would be, uh, deliveries would probably be delayed by about a week to 10 days just for the first batch or so. But uh, we're literally within a week to two weeks from it. Really, are it's um it's we've um we teased it uh, um so early that um, that we're the ones that got super excited about it, and waiting's just been uh, difficult. I feel like a a kid the night before Christmas waiting for it to come out. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Uh, so, what are, what are your thoughts, Andrew, on the bank the banking situation? Well, I just, um, we've seen this before. And uh, one thing that I've been talking about a lot for the last week is that if you go back to say 2008, that financial crisis, and we didn't have anything that we could compare it to firsthand. And what I mean is the last uh, uh, financial crisis of that magnitude would have been the stock market crash in 1929, and then the decade after that. So we heard all of the stories about how tough that was back uh, from grandparents and parents. So we didn't have any firsthand knowledge. Here we are 15 years after the financial crisis of 2008. And um, in our minds, if you, were, if you were financially responsible for anything at that time, you know exactly what's gonna happen. In your mind, you have a roadmap of, of, of exactly what happens. So we start to see, runs on banks because the banks are starting to uh, starting to be very, very soft. And we, we can see that they're in trouble. If we were to find out that more banks went under, that would not surprise us. What would surprise us is if uh, we had a full recovery from here on out and that those uh, the banks in trouble were just isolated incidents, which um, that's not what they are. So we've been talking about this for two years and, and it's finally here. So um, after that happens, after the banks start to go down, we know that um, that real estate prices are going to take a hit. Like um, they're going to they're going to sit. Inventory is not going to sell as quickly, and the prices are just going to tank. And for people that don't prepare themselves financially for these events, it um, you're going to look back and say, "Wow." I knew this was going to happen. Why didn't I do anything? Even if you um, watch that movie, The Big Short, and you yep. see the, the gentleman in that movie, how he actually knew this was, that the last financial crisis was coming. He knew what we all knew because back then the real estate prices were so high. We knew that that the real estate was going to come down. We just didn't understand that that was going to create a financial crisis, not just domestically, but globally. And I expect the same thing this time. And I feel that our past experience can better prepare us for everything moving forward. And the bankers know it. I had I had uh, lunch here in Texas on Sunday and the president of the local bank here confirmed it. He said the banks and, and somehow in the banking system, they have access to see what other banks, uh, what they have in bonds. So there's some kind of open window that they can see other, what other banks do. 
And he said, it's a house of cards. It is wow. absolutely horrible. But wow. it, this, the local bank here didn't get into the bond market as much as the, the, the other banks did. Wow. So they're going to be okay. They must have a setup sort of like what we do for the coin industry where we have like this. Um, it's sort of like a message board where you could go out and I could say, I'm looking for 1,000 units of uh, pre-1933 $20 gold. And um, and other people can see what I'm looking for. And then they can see the responses that I get and how much I'm able to pick up. If yeah. I can't pick anything up, then that sends a message to anybody out there that's reading that um, that the price is too cheap and nobody will sell. And it sounds to me that they're that if the banks are are um, hedging with bonds, which we know that they are, and with um, der derivatives, that um, it's possible that the other banks can see that. So they're they're bracing for it as well. Oh yeah, they know it's. It, 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 he, there's no doubt in his mind, none uh, <laughs> that it's it's coming. I look at it from a prophetic standpoint and run from cycle standpoint, right? So if you look, you mentioned the crash of 1929, right? So when the crash itself happened, it was, took about two and a half years for the final bottom to come in. So the crash of March 2020, you go two and a half years forward, that would have been into December of last year. Now we're in the year of Jubilee, which you have to add a year. So what that cycle is pointing to is the worst market event in human history is about to manifest, worse than 1929 this year. OK, and my cycles point to a huge, huge, huge crash end of this year. So will it happen? I don't know. I haven't looked that close, but I'm just telling you um, the market cycles are pointing to a massive stock crash this year. But again, I don't care about the stock crash. Right. Because why? If the stock crashed 100 times, all they do is create more money and push it in the stock market and then reinflate it, right? So this is not about a stock market event. This is about the crash of the world's reserve currency, the U.S. dollar. Yeah, that's why you're seeing these bank events going on right now. You have to look at the pieces. It's, you know, that we keep staring at the stock market. You know, a lot of people do because they think that's important, but it's really not because if the U.S. dollar takes a haircut overnight, it's going to be attacked by the bricks to fulfill the prophecy of Kim Clement, the brothers of Goliath stand in glee, which are the bricks. We will cripple you. When the dollar loses a third of its value overnight, everything priced in the U.S. dollars from the stock market, bonds, home values, everything takes a one-third haircut overnight. Now, the problem with that is that's why like, when the stock market crashed, and Andrew can confirm this, but let's say you had a 10, 15 percent market crash on anything, right? They immediately shut down that that market of whatever is crashing 15, 20 percent, because what they do is they create paper contracts called derivatives. So everything, so a 15 percent market crash, when you multiply that with derivatives, could be a two, three, five hundred percent collapse because it's their derivatives multiply the, the dollar values. So that's why they have to control the markets because any sizable crash more than 10% freaks out the computers and they have to shut down the markets. So a 33% crash will be hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars of collapse uh, of fiat money. And so this is going to break the financial system because it's going to happen so quickly because God's going to intervene to make sure that it breaks the financial system. And so the real estate markets are going to plummet. Why? Very simple. Because the banks collapse. Who holds the notes? The banks. If the banks are holding the notes, guess what happens to your mortgages? They are canceled. Why are they canceled? Number one is the truth comes out that they are all fraudulent in the first place, so that fraud vitiates everything it touches. Number two is there's no one to collect. The banks are gone. The banking system implodes. And that's why we need, we're going to need 45 minutes. You know, we're going to need President Trump. He's the builder, but what's about to happen? What's about to happen, no man can do. That's what I want to emphasize this. No man can do what's about to happen in the financial markets in the world. So God will get the glory. Everyone will know. Everyone will know it was by God's hand that this all went down. And when this event goes down, God gets the glory, as we've talked about, because it's his glory. That's why we're on this show, right? 
And then we're going to get the builder. Trump comes back to rebuild what God destroyed, but the rebuild is a money system based on honesty. Back to the upside down triangle, backed by a money, so probably a treasury instruments that will be backed by gold and silver. And if you want to talk a moonshot on gold and silver, guess guess what's coming, okay? But the problem is, is those that are going to want to come in and say, hey, I've got a million dollars that I want to, or two million or five million that I want to buy precious metals with, it won't be there. You're try Andrew's trying to buy an order or whatever for several million right now, and he's having problems filling it. Imagine after the dollar you crashes, loses its status as the world reserve currency. When that event happens, it will change everything because the world will no longer accept the dollar as payment, but they will accept gold. They will accept silver. And so it's a, that's why this event that's coming, it's a third seal in Revelation, of Revelation. Every seal that's manifested so far is a worldwide phenomenon. Coronavirus was first seal, worldwide phenomenon. Peace taken from the earth, second seal, beginning with the George Floyd riot, it's on Pentecost, worldwide phenomenon. Um, by the way, seal one was opened on Hanukkah, feast. Seal two, feast, Pentecost. What's the and what's the and then I don't know if you know this, but uh, on on Purim, that's when uh, the all, all the video came out of January six with Tucker. Yep. Okay, it actually happened on the same day of Purim. Okay, and then the last thing I want to mention: what's the next feast that's coming? Passover. Back to our presentation. When could God intervene? Well, I don't know, but Passover sure looks interesting. Look what happened for you know the story of Israel and Egypt four hundred years. Yeah, you, you texted me, I think, last week about this, and uh, I, I think I texted you back saying that one of my uh, military sources said that there's a major, major, major event planned for May. Something yeah. big is going to happen in May. Now that, you know, wars and rumors of wars, timelines change, you know, the enemy moves, but there's a significant movement right now in May. Well, if, if your staff could be so calm kind and actually click on page and just to answer that question page 24 okay so i'm not making days up i simply i'm calculating time okay so passover 15 nisan the, the key day of passover the day jesus died was 15 nisan um, it was 15 nisan which our date would be april 6 okay so on on the page 24 here's the math calculations it takes Israel 18 days to walk to the Red Sea. They camp there for eight days, and then they cross on the 25th day, and that's the day that God opened and closed the Red Sea, and now there's chariots at the bottom of the Red Sea, including, you know, every, you know everyone's baby died on that day, okay? So it's day 25, Day 25 in our lifetime, if you run it from April 6, is May 1. Okay? Does anything happen May 1? Again, God knows, not me. I'm telling you that if there is going to be, it's going to come to an absolute head, you know, clash of the titans. It's going to be in, in, in potentially instead, in April, especially, you know, as we head into the end of April, it's going to get insane. And then something crazy happens. Uh, we're, we're about to go with maybe nuclear war. And then God intervenes, yep. right? And then you just you like got, you have a prophecy fulfilled with the BRICS, with uh, China negotiating a deal with Saudi Arabia and Iran. That's that's Ezekiel thirty eight and thirty nine, is yeah. is set for the first time in our lifetime. Yes, that's amazing, absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so Andrew, uh, we we talked about this like almost two years ago, before even interest rates started to go up. And look at the interest rates, look at the bank faults, uh, everything that we, we, we talked about coming to happen is happening right before our very eyes. It's, a, it's actually very unbelievable. It's, um, the things that we talk about have been, uh, have been called conspiracy theories. 
And um, they probably are until they're not, which um, it seems like it, the timeline is about six to nine months before they can uh, become reality. This morning, I was looking at the news and I saw I saw two things that we've been talking about for, um, I would say, the bulk of the last year. One, I saw the meeting with uh, with Putin and the, the president of China, and yep. they were commenting on how close the two nations are, are, are becoming which we've talked about that so often uh, on our interviews. And then the the other thing is, is you're starting to hear CBDC. I couldn't believe it. Um, yesterday was the first time I heard it on, on mainstream media, um, CBDC. And uh, we've been talking about it um, for at least six months now, I think maybe seven or eight months. And uh, it's coming. I mean, we're doing our best to, to, to fight against it, but the central bank digital currency is coming and uh, they're doing everything they can to push it through and make it mainstream and eventually make it the new norm. Right. They're destroying these little banks and guess who's picking up the little bank, the big banks, pennies yeah. on the dollar to make six major banks. You can't make this up. Yeah. Yeah. And if the I, big if banks. I can, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. If I want, if you can chime in, if you can staff can please um, pop on page 16 um, and this is the point I want to make. As much as the central bank digital currencies are trying to push this um, forward and get it happening, it's too early. The infrastructure is not there yet. Okay, so it's not going to work for them. Number one, it's not happening right now. So I know everyone's talking about it, you know, and it's just like the thing. Oh my god! Oh my goodness! You know, we got they're going to push a central bank digital currency on us. It's premature in what's happening. Um, but more importantly, that I want you to understand here. Okay. Who's bringing on the central bank digital currency? The bankers. Yep. So now you have to think about this, right? It's a very simple to understand. God's going to intervene and take down who? The bankers, okay? The money changers. Who's bringing on the central bank digital currency? The money changers. If God intervenes, not if, when God intervenes, God's going to flip the tables on the money changers. Guess what happens to the money changers' plans? They're over, okay? And so everything they plan for us stops and literally gets turned on them ultimately because that's, that's what harvest is. And what you have sown, thus shall you reap, reap if you read Galatians. So the central bank digital currency is going to come to a complete screeching halt and it's going to fail. Why? Because the bankers get stopped. <laughs> they literally are, will be destroyed by the angel of death, if my guess. And then God intervenes. So I know all this sounds in, insanely impossible, but you know God operates in the impossible. Yep. So as much as they're going to try to push agenda, you know they're going to. They got the executive order fourteen oh six seven, the you know, central bank digital currency. If you read, you know, on page sixteen, it says Revelation eighteen verse four. It says, "Get out of her." Be not partakers of her sins. So my point of that, and it's kind of the point of this you know, interview, you know, kind of like every day I kind of I listen, you know, listen to guys say, what should I, what's the kind of message here? And the message for this interview is honestly is Revelation 18, verse 4. Be not partakers of her sins. What does that mean? It means we're going to be in the world, but not of the world. What's the simplest way to never even worry about? Because the central bank digital currency will at some point come on. It'll be tied with the mark of the beast in the future, okay? Because first, they, they fall. They run for the most get destroyed. Many, whoever left, run for the hills to go into hiding, okay? So we're going to have seven years of plenty. We're not going to have some horrible central bank digital currency right now. It's not going to happen because they all go into hiding. But the point is, at some point, you know, you're not stopping revelation, this is the third seal. Then comes the fourth seal, then the fifth. And then you've got manifestation of, of all the horrible things that are going to come upon the earth later on, right? So what's the best way to be in the world and not of the world? Precious metals. Because I can give you a piece of gold, piece of silver, um, Pastor Dave, Andrew, and we're transacting, right? And that's what precious metals are. That's why they hate them, because it completely devoids. It's, it's void of any central bank or bankers control. That's why they laughed at that interview of Robert Kiyosaki, because yeah. why? Why? Because they want to, evil wants to be in the middle of every transaction. It was a nervous laugh, too, that Neil Cavuto had. A nervous laugh that 
he knew he was right, but he didn't want to admit it. And Robert Kiyosaki was not going to back down, go away from silver and gold. He said, this is, this is the, the only way. So Andrew, I, we just have a couple of minutes left. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to you to talk about what action items people could take to get that physical gold and silver today. Oh, absolutely. People should reach out to bh-pm.com. That's our website. Right on the homepage, there's a form that you could put in your first name, last name, your phone number, email address, say that uh, His Glory sent you, and um, put in a couple sentences about yourself. And and uh, I always like to share what some of the people are putting in there. Um, I've seen in the last week people say, I need to get my funds out of the bank. Please help me do this as quickly as possible. Some people say, um, I would like to roll over a 401k or an IRA into one that holds precious metals. I don't know how to do it. Can someone call me and uh, and and show me how to do it? Um, those are those are the best ways to communicate to us. Some people say I, I've bought gold and silver for years. I I would like to switch over and start getting it from you. Other people will say I'm a novice. I've never done it before. But reach out soon. The wait times right now are usually one to two days. Right now, um, prior to the last ten days, we we're getting back with people in about twenty four hours, and uh, we're starting to see a little bit of a backlog. But uh, nothing too serious. But if you um, if you feel you're not getting a call back quick enough, then just send another submission, say second request, and yeah. uh, I'll move you right up to the top and and uh, make sure that we're not uh, upsetting anyone by not getting to them quick enough. Beverly Hills Precious Metals Exchange is a client-focused firm devoted to assisting our clients with precious metals. Our clients range from first-time to serious coin collectors and investors seeking to add precious metals to their investment portfolios. We are not interested in volatile investments, leveraged products, and intangible assets. With rising inflation and the devaluing of the dollar hurting middle-class families, investing in gold and silver ensures protection for your hard-earned money. Save the value of your money today by investing in gold and silver at Beverly Hills Precious Metals. But the urgency is there. Even if you would just like to learn how this works, please just reach out and we'll do our best to help. You know, I've traveled just in the last four months. We've been to Israel twice with two groups, about 300 people. And many of them that have bought silver and gold have the sense of peace that they, they got that from you. And they were very thankful because when we talked about before, Bo has brought this up, you, you've brought this up, I bring it up. When this event happens, there's going to be used car salesmen that are going to try to sell you silver and gold that haven't been in business for over 30 years like you. And uh, you really got to go with somebody that you trust. The, the first thing that happens is people start selling silver plated, gold plated coins. OK, yep. so that's not real stuff. And they're going to get convinced you're going to they're going to charge you exorbitant amounts of, of value or monies for these things that are plated. OK, so it's and they're you know, with this junk inside. OK, so you got to really buy from somebody, you, you know, uh, again, you know, I just want to finish with the whole point of our conversation today is. You know, we don't want, I don't want to give advice. I don't think anybody here wants to give advice to people. People need to pray on this. They need to, you know, what feels right in your heart. If you feel that the world is normal, then, you know, this is not for you. But if you truly in your heart feel something's completely wrong, it just doesn't feel right. Okay. Gold and silver are an insurance policy against governments. We battle not against flesh and blood, but principalities, which are governments. Okay. So if you feel that something's not right in your heart, then if you want the best night's sleep ever, if you're holding gold and silver, you're going to have some really, really good night's sleeps. And lastly, I just want to finish this. You know, we've talked about Passover. It's 16 days away. 16 days away. Yep, that's going to be amazing. So uh, again, as Bo says, Andrew said this before, before you make any decision, take it to the Lord. Make sure you have to ask for wisdom, discernment. And if you don't feel the Lord is guiding you in it, don't do it. Make sure the Lord is guiding you because he's ultimately our provider. No matter what happens, he's got it. And this uh, this remnant is going to rise and we're going to see the greatest revivals in the history of the world. Yep. And I'm ready for that. I'm excited. I'm not fearful. I'm 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 ecstatic. And, you know, it can go dark tomorrow and I'll, I'll be singing because I know our God is a great God and he's going to deliver. Important finish. God is in complete control of everything that's going on in our world. We are watching the fulfillment of a two and a half thousand year prophecy. So all of this is by his design. Amen. Amen. All right, Andrew, Bo, thank you so much. We'll see you both soon. See you Thanks next time. God Bye. bless.